Snapdragon 855, 2.84 gigahertz, Apple A12, Bionic chipset. Here's why phone specs I've come to the conclusion are just a lie. That video's coming up, let's go. What is up guys, Nick here helping you to master your technology. Specifications have been something that helps you make a choice on which phone to buy for such a long time. But I think phones are getting so good that this is kind of just a lie to get us to buy these phones. And let me explain why I think this is so. Now the Apple A12 Bionic, a great chip, fast as ever in the phone. But I've never actually seen that the A12 do anything more than say an iPhone 7 Plus or 8 Plus has done for me in terms of everyday iPhone use, for example. Yes, the 120 hertz sample rate has, but this is, you know, this A12 Bionic being the fastest chip ever, iOS doesn't even take advantage of this. So kind of felt like a lie to me, really didn't do much of anything. Now with the OnePlus 7 Pro, 12 gigabytes of RAM, 90 hertz display, but day to day, you kind of forget about that 90 hertz once you use it a little bit and you realize once you're in the application, it's not really effective anymore. But in gaming, you might say, well, it has all these extra specs. Well, I'm able to run this game, PUBG Mobile, one of the most popular games on planet Earth, on the Galaxy A70, which is way cheaper than a OnePlus 7 Pro. So these are the kind of things I am talking about here when I say these specs seem kind of like a lie. Now, user experience, opening up the iPhone XR, the iPhone X, the XS Max with Face ID, this is something I think consumers really notice. Or how about the gestures, the user experience of using those gestures. This is something that actually I think is a real reason to choose a phone or not. Or how about the Galaxy S10 Plus with its ultrasonic in-display fingerprint sensor? Another feature that changes the way you use your phone day to day. And this is something you might want to choose a phone for. Or how about the Google Pixel 3a XL stock Android? Another reason why you might want to choose this phone for example, or how about one of the best user experiences out there, the Galaxy Notes S Pen, and uh, very unique to this device. This actually changes more of how you use a phone versus just a specification sheet about the display size and stuff like that. So that's the point I'm trying to get across here. So after that initial week of the new feeling, the pop-up camera on the OnePlus 7 Pro or the punch-out display or punch-hole display on the S10 Plus with its 1440p resolution, you kind of forget about this. Or how about the 10R's bigger display, but remembering it's still LCD like your older iPhone 8 Plus. So after, you know, using the phone for a little bit of time, you kind of forget about pretty much a lot of the specs that your phone did give you. And all this stuff kind of just seems like hype. And even basic cheaper smartphones like the newer 3A and 3A XL are a great example of where I think a lot of people are gonna be putting their money because you can get like 90% of what these really impressive spec phones on a spec sheet offer for half the cost. So that's another reason is that just the amount of phone you're getting in a phone like this guy right here or some of the great you know Chinese smartphones like the Xiaomi phones for example, example, uh, these are just great options that don't have to have necessarily the most impressive spec sheet. Also, all those specs don't mean nothing when developers uh, don't even get all their apps updated to really support this 12 gigabytes of RAM or this 855. There's so many apps on the App Store. It takes a while for these to be supported. Even on the iOS platform, here's an application, a really old one where you can track habits called Habit Bull. And this phone still doesn't show it in the proper six inch size, 6.1 inch size of the 10R. And the next reason why I find these specs to just be kind of a lie to get us to buy the phone is because what matters more is the features we're using on the phones, like the schedule power on and off feature, which is awesome for the OnePlus 7 Pro, for example, or how about the amazing accessibility features that come in iPhone or all the new features that are coming to iOS 13 for your iPhone. You're not thinking about three gigabytes of RAM or the fastest A13 chip that's gonna be coming in the, the 10R besides that initial launch phase. You're thinking about how's this phone gonna improve my life at all going forward. Next up, the Galaxy Note 8 or oh, Note 9, for example, having the ability to change out the S Pen settings or the edge panels. These things actually change how you use that phone day to day and might make you more productive or even less productive depending on how you set 
these phones up or how you use them every day. So the next reason is making you think you need more phone than you really need. Here's a 10R for example, but really did your last phone actually have any issues? The iPhone 8 Plus, I beg to differ. The 8 Plus is still an amazing phone for example, but with all the marketing and even my videos do this as well, but I just try to help people decide if they wanna buy it, not so much trying to convince you that you don't have to keep your old phone. The S10 Plus, for example, as well as the Galaxy S9 Plus. Was that really that bad of a phone? Did you have to go to the Galaxy S10 Plus? So more like a novelty versus a need. So the specs on that new phone, not really changing too much of your life. Now, the OnePlus 7 Pro has some nice innovations with the pop-up camera under display fingerprint sensor, but I would still argue that it comes more down to how that phone works for you. Like with the pop-up view and a split screen on the Samsung, for example, this is more make or break for you know purchasing or deciding to get a phone or not or how about the Siri experience on the iPhone you might like that if you're an Apple user you might like how all the Apple devices work together how the gestures work how smooth they are for the iPhone or you just might like all the customization options that come on top of oxygen OS with the OnePlus 7 Pro allowing you to get this phone to look just how you want to make it look and still be fast on top of it all you might actually like that maximum smooth 90 Hertz display but one thing you're probably not thinking about is how fast that the phone is going to be you know obsolete in just a year so this is another reason why uh, it gets a little bit frustrating because you'll buy a phone that's marketed as the fastest the best that has the 855 the 812 and then six months to a year later your phone is no longer the fastest or the best so with that being said one of the main things i found that actually does change your experience is the camera that's one spec i'm not going to say and battery life a bigger battery life typically has a bigger spec like a 4100 milliamp hour for example and the color is something that i actually think changes how you feel about the phone you know personal color really is a personal choice and it will really make you like that phone i think a little bit longer now software choice as well if you go with a software you're not enjoying too much that's going to sour the experience along the way now design is another thing how does that phone look versus the specs on the sheet i just want to see how that phone looks because this changes the game and what you choose as well and lastly we should mention that you know you might just want a phone that really just offers great value for cheap and that's where the pixel 3a comes in and don't take this out of context i'm not saying that you don't get an a12 you literally do get an a12 in the 10r 10s 10s max you literally do get an 855 in a samsung s10 for example but what i'm trying to say is that if you were to think that oh because i'm getting all the best specs out there that spec sheet then that spec sheet's gonna lie to you because it's more about the intangibles it's more about the little things that matter and make up your smartphone experience and i explained many of them in this video so i hope you found this informing entertaining and enjoyable let me know your thoughts do specs change whether you're gonna buy a phone or not let us know down below in the comments if you found this video helpful entertaining informing thumbs up i will catch you all in the next one be sure to be well and peace